Tonight, find out how one organization is raising awareness about the homeless. Plus, we'll get a sneak peek inside Juxtapose. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News for April 12, 2012. I'm Judson Garner. And I'm Bailey Majors. Thank you for joining us this evening. Troy University students spent a night under the stars last night, but it wasn't a typical camping trip. These students spent the evening away from their homes to bring awareness to those who don't have any homes at all. Joey Hudson has the story. You normally wouldn't find anyone sleeping out on the quad, but Wednesday night, students did just that to raise awareness of homelessness. For many, it may be easy to forget just how real the problem is. Most of the time, um, before anyone cares, it's too late. And so I just think this is great that they are, um, they're speaking on behalf of those people who don't have a voice who are on the street. And, um, and it ranges from all types of people, from elderly to children to men to women, black, white, it doesn't matter. I, anyone can be a victim of homelessness. And so I think it's really important that they're, um, they're advocating for this. It's important to spread awareness because... They used to be like us. They used to be in school. Uh, they're, they're actually people with problems that we need to pay attention to. People don't, you know, think about it. You are really, you know, one sick child, one bad relationship, or even one failed class away from being homeless. As attendees asked questions, a few misconceptions regarding homelessness were addressed. One thing that, that is not, I guess, made aware in rural areas is that there are homeless people. There are people who live on the streets. You just don't see it as much. And if you do see them, they are classified as, you know, having a mental illness or being, you know, a drug addict versus being an actual homeless person. It's kind of like in the South or in smaller towns, we close our eyes and don't really see what the real picture is. Joey Hudson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The event was organized by Zeta Phi Beta and Phi Beta Sigma. Last night, Troy University's Association of Black Journalists brought a couple of professionals working in the media to speak to students about careers in journalism. Dustin Carroll has the details. The NABJ held their annual spring workshop Wednesday night at the Trojan Center Ballroom. This workshop included two guest speakers and married gospel countdown host Bridget Cannon Scott and Carly Amenheiser, a reporter from the Southeast Sun. The guest speakers were here to give students advice on how to improve their chances of finding a job after graduation. Both Scott and Amenheiser say they just want to help students out with their experience they have received. The kids that are in college have a lot of questions about the radio business, those that are in wanting to go into this profession. And so I wanted to come down and give them some pointers as to how they can get into this business and pointers of what they can be doing right now. I think it was a great opportunity to, to help students and, and tell them what, what it's like being a journalist. Uh, some, some things that you may not hear in the classroom. Scott feels one of the most important skills journalism students should learn if they want a career in this business is the ability to speak properly in public. I talk to them about the importance of speaking well. I tell them that, um, you know, I know everybody speaks slang and this type of thing and that type of thing, but if you're wanting to be in, in broadcasting, even though you may do that at home or with your friends, you know, um, in your professional life, that isn't, you know, you can't do that. You've got to learn how to speak well, good noun verb agreement. Amenheiser says she looks for future employees who have very sufficient journalism skills. I look for someone who's well-rounded. I think one of the most important things that a journalism student can be is well-rounded. They need to know how to write. They need to know how to edit. They need to know how to take photographs. They need to know how to paginate. They need to do all these things because employers are looking for more well-rounded journalists. Dustin Carroll, Troy Trojan Vision News. And that is not the end of the Journalism Symposium this week in Troy. Tomorrow, the Hall School of Journalism and Communication will present their annual M. Santon Evans Symposium on Money Politics and the Media tomorrow morning at 11.30 in the Claudia Crosby Theater. Well, Bailey, uh, this weekend, Troy University's theater and dance departments will be holding their annual dance concert. That's right, Judson and Virgil Scarborough gives us a look at Juxtaposed. Twice a year, the students in the Department of Dance and Theater get to show off their moves to the public. 
Juxtapose is our spring dance concert. We only have two dance concerts a year, and this is our big one. It's our uh, faculty and professionally and student choreographed show. The meaning of Juxtapose is side by side, and one of the directors of the show just didn't want one style of dancing. My idea was that we're going to really get different styles of dance and different styles of music that are actually going to compose a very exciting evening of dance. Oh. Basically, there's stories of love, there's stories of death, there's a huge like hip-hop number that's really live and energetic, and um, the, you're, you're just, be ready for all different kinds of emotions. The Troy Dance Repertory Ensemble is celebrating their fifth year this year, and Lazar says that they are a wonderful addition to the concert. Just an incredible group of dancers, very devoted, and creating this evening with them, I think it's just such a wonderful pleasure. And if you are not a fan of dancing, the concert will provide other ways to entertain you. It's going to be live music, something more classical, things that a little bit involve musical theater, voices of the people from their actors. As with any performance, the performers want the public to come out to see all the hard work they have put into their show. I have a huge expectation for the show. Like everybody's going to love it. Every time I see it, every time they run through it, it's just something new, something uh, more spectacular to watch. And I find that I fall in love with it more and more each time. If people would just come to come and see it, they will find something that they will love the most. And it will be such a wonderful way to... Um, showcase different kind of style that they may, might try to like as well when they're going to see it. Rachel Scarborough, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Juxtapose will be Friday and Saturday night at 7.30 in the Claudia Crosby Theater. Tickets are on sale at the Claudia Crosby box office. And now taking a look at news from around the state, in Pell City officials are, are planning a public meeting Thursday evening to discuss concerns about murky tap water. Residents say their water has been brown and undrinkable since December. City officials say the problem started when the city tied into a new water system. The water flow reversed directions, stirring up sediment in the pipes. In Dothan, a study finds the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine could have a significant impact on Dothan area's economy. The consulting firm reports, report projects that the medical college will create 67 jobs in Houston County next year and about 400 by 2030 with an impact of $160 million by then. And in Montgomery, more than 20 people have spoken at a public hearing on a bill to make changes to Alabama's toughest in the nation, immigration law. Many of the speakers at the meeting of the House Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee said the changes do not go far enough to fix what some called Alabama, Alabama's terrible immigration law. Many wanted, many wanted legislators to repeal the original immigration law. Still to come on Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News, the softball team is in action today. Tiffany Lester will be in next with sports to let us know how the team's doing. But first, George Zimmerman is facing charges for, shooting the, for the shooting of Trayvon Martin. We'll have the, the details on that story after the break. Hi, I'm Mia Hamm. As a professional soccer player, I know how rewarding sports can be and how quickly injuries happen. So I've teamed up with the American Association of Orthodontists to ask athletes to play it safe. With my years of training, I know what it takes to become an expert, and orthodontists do too. They're the experts who help people obtain healthy, beautiful smiles. Wear mouth guards, face masks, and helmets to prevent injuries. Keep smiling and visit braces.org. If you can learn one thing in life, especially if you go into business, it's how to communicate and how to work with others. And I do think Troy taught me that. Troy reaches out to people who they see their commitment to public service. Troy just attracts students that want to give back to the community, that want to give back all across the world. We want to educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, the body to act. We want to enable our students to go out into this world and make a difference. Troy University. In class. Online. Within reach. Troy.edu. From the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we'll go to Judson Garner at the Global News Desk. Judson. Thanks, Bailey. The Neighborhood Watch volunteer accused of gunning down the unarmed Florida teenager will be in court early this afternoon. After weeks of protests across the nation, George Zimmerman was arrested Wednesday in the shooting of Trayvon Martin. Randall Pinkston has the latest from Sanford. Court or will be here soon, I understand. 
Mr. O'Mara, I got your, your uh, ad hoc... Uh, George Zimmerman made his first court appearance before Florida judge. Mr. Zimmerman, you're appearing here for your first appearances, our first appearance at this time for charge of murder in the second degree. The 28-year-old is charged with second-degree murder for the shooting death of Trayvon Martin. Remember your right to remain silent. All the other rights that he has told you about, you have to say nothing. Zimmerman claims he shot and killed Trayvon Martin in self-defense after getting into a fight with the unarmed black teenager. Martin's family is relieved Zimmerman is finally facing charges. We just want people to know that if you shoot someone that is unarmed, that you should be arrested. Now uh, we have to turn our attention to trying to get him to stay where he's at. Protesters took to the streets in Sanford and in cities across the nation for weeks, but the special prosecutor insists they did not influence her decision. We prosecute based on the facts of any given case, as well as the laws of the state of Florida. Local residents celebrated at the Sanford Church where rallies for Martin began. We got victory and hey, look like it's peace and justice after all. Zimmerman's attorney says his client acted within the stand your ground law. The Florida statute allows people to use deadly force in a fight. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, Sanford, Florida. The bloody fighting in Syria, Syria appears to be on hold after a new ceasefire fire deal took hold. But world leaders aren't ready to call it progress just yet. They're worried that the Syrian government will launch a fresh wave of attacks on its own citizens, calling for an end to Bashar Assad's regime. Daniel Nottingham reports from Washington. Soldiers patrol the Syrian border where a fragile ceasefire appears to have taken hold between government troops and rebels. The U.N. brokered deal calls for forces loyal to the Syrian regime to stop widespread attacks on opposition fighters. If that truce holds, international observers will move in and talks will begin between the rebels and the government of Bashar Assad. But opponents say government troops are still deployed across the country ready to fight. There has been an increase, a big increase in the number of checkpoints. And those checkpoints are heavily armed. Assad's regime launched a bloody crackdown 13 months ago on protesters who wanted him to step down. The White House is watching the ceasefire closely, but is not ready to say it's a sign of progress in Syria. The Assad regime has so far failed to comply with key obligations. The regime's troops and tanks have not pulled back from population centers. And it remains to be seen if the regime will keep its pledge to permit peaceful demonstrations. The U.S. and its allies insist there are no plans to launch military strikes on Syria like they did in Libya to end Muammar Gaddafi's rule. Human rights groups hope the truce can finally lead to an end to this conflict, which has already killed at least 9,000 people. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, The White House. And that'll wrap things up from the Global News Desk. To see more stories from across the country and around the world, you can tune in to Trojan Vision Global News right after the nightly news. Now back to you, Bailey. Thanks, Judson. And now Tiffany Lester joins us with sports. So, Tiffany, not a whole lot of things going on in sports today, but we do have a couple of games coming up this weekend. That's true. We had a softball game today, and I'll let you know the score of that later. But we do have some tennis and some baseball action getting in the weekend, and I'll let you know all those details just a little bit first, let's talk about some tennis or basketball. Troy University's women's basketball team didn't have to wait long for a new head coach to be named. Troy University's athletic director announced that eight conference championship winner Shonda Rigby will be the new head coach. Rigby just completed her seventh season at Pensacola State College, where she led the Pirates to a combined 64-6 and record over the last two seasons and two trips to the National Junior College Athletic Association Final Four. The Pirates followed up an undefeated regular 2010-2011 season with the first back-to-back -back state titles and Final Four appearances in school history. And getting into tennis, if you've missed out on any tennis action, you'll have one final chance to see them at home as both the men's and women's tennis teams close out their regular season this weekend. The women's team will hit the court to take on Middle Tennessee on Friday at 2.30 and close out their season at, on Sunday morning Four at 10 a.m. against North Texas. The men will play their regular season finale against number 54 ranked Georgia State on Saturday at 2 p.m. 
After the, this weekend at home, both teams will travel to Denton, Texas for the Sunbelt Conference Championships, which begin on Thursday, April the 19th. And the Trojans softball team was in action this afternoon on the road against Florida A&M. The Trojans are coming off a doubleheader split against another non-conference foe, Kennesaw State, on Tuesday. Looks like the Trojans are continuing their winning ways, defeating the Rattlers 4-2 in Tallahassee. The Trojans had 10 hits as a team. J.C. Affelt led the Trojans at the plate with three hits and an RBI, followed by Nikki Hollett with two hits, two runs, and two RBI on a home run in the fourth. J.C. Affelt picked up the win on the mound in the shutout, only allowing one hit in four and third innings work. Up next, the Trojans keep their, their Florida road trip going with a weekend series against Florida Atlantic and Boca Raton. The Trojan baseball team will look to build on their win against Jack State as they head into conference play this weekend against Middle Tennessee. The Trojans have an overall record of 14-18 and 18 so far this season, which is the opposite of where they were in the standings this time last year. At home, the Trojans are 8-6, and six, but Logan Pierce says that he's confident that his team is moving in the right direction and that even though Middle Tennessee has more power going into this matchup, playing on their home field will be an advantage. Uh, but we got them at home, and we're tough to beat at home, and um, we haven't shown that here lately. Uh, on the weekends, but um, you know, I, I think I think it's starting to come around a little bit. We're starting to play a lot better. The first pitch of the weekend at Riddle Pace Field is set for 6 p.m. on Friday, followed by another 6 p.m. matchup on Saturday, and the Trojans will close out the weekend on Sunday at 1. And while we often talk about football or baseball athletes of the week, tonight the honor goes to a track and field star, Junior Nicola Bola from. Castle Novo, Italy, has been named the Sunbelt Conference Field Athlete of the Week. Bola finished this past week's performance at the Tiger Track Classic with a record-breaking hammer throw with a distance of 61.07 meters. This performance also moved him into 16th place in the NCAA East Division I outdoor qualifier list. Bola and the rest of the Trojans will be in action this weekend as they head back to South Alabama to compete in the USA Invite. The Trojans are four weeks away from the Sunbelt Conference Outdoor Championship. And as we do each week, Trojan Vision brings you a look at everything that is happening in Trojan sports in the weekly sports show, Trojan Sports Now. For a preview of this week's edition, here's Danielle Percival. Coming up on Trojan Sports Now, we'll give you a look back at Trojan baseball as they whoop Jack State Tuesday night, plus softball at home and some exciting football news. As always, we'll give you a look ahead to a home conference series for the baseball team, and the tennis teams will wrap up their season at home this weekend. All that and more tonight on Trojan Sports Now. Trojan Sports Now airs tonight at 7 and 11. So, Bailey, Justin, we, we did see some winning action today with the softball team, so hopefully the tennis team and the baseball team will have the same luck. Absolutely. Best of luck to them this weekend, and we'll be sure Definitely. to tune in at 7 to watch Trojan Sports Now. Definitely. All right, thanks a lot, Tiffany. Thank you. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, Aaron Taylor learns about a pair of comedians that will entertain Troy students tonight. But first, the temperatures seem to be slightly decreasing over the past couple of days. When will things start warming up again, Bree? We have been experiencing those cooler temperatures earlier this week, but as we head out through the week, it looks like those temperatures will be warming up. I'll have more coming up in weather. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone. But you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org. We've got your back. From the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now Bree Sanders joins us for a look at weather. So Bree, the, uh, for the past couple days the skies have been clear and I'm sure everyone's really enjoying that. But at, at the same time the temperatures seem to be dropping. 
Is this trend going to continue on over the weekend? or? Well, we have had those decreasing temperatures over the past couple of days, but it mm -hmm. looks like that's at a standstill right now. It looks like we'll be getting warmer as we head through the weekend, but I'll get more into that in just a moment. Right. First, let's take a look at our campus snapshot. Right now on campus, we see that the sun is setting right over Big Graves. It's a very beautiful day outside right now, right at about 70 degrees. So whether you're headed to class or headed home from work, you can definitely stop outside and enjoy the view. As we take a look at our current conditions right now, we have sunny skies. Temperatures at 70 degrees, dew points at 34 degrees, humidity at 27%, barometers at 30.13 inches and steady. Winds are coming in from the north northeast from 5 to 10 miles per hour. Today's stats, we had a high today of 72, a low of 43. There was no rain today. The sun rises at 6.17 a.m. and it should set at 7.12 p.m. Looking at our temps around the state, overall the state is experiencing some lower 70 degree temperatures right now. Mobile coming in at 74. Huntsville at 65, Birmingham at 67, Montgomery at 68, Troy at 70, Phoenix City at 66, and Dothan at 64. Looking at our temperatures around the southeast, in our area we're in the upper 60s right now. But as we head throughout the rest of the southeast, those temperatures get a little bit cooler into about the lower 60s over there. The Carolinas in 62, um, Miami at 84, as well as certain parts of Texas in the mid 80s. A little bit warmer than what we've been seeing lately. Looking at our temperatures around the United States as a whole, over here on the northeast, they're in about the upper 40s, a little bit cooler than where we are. And as we head back through our area, they look, get a little bit warmer. Looking at our current surface map in our area, we have a few high pressure systems here heading towards the northeast with a little bit of precipitation conditions coming in towards our area. But as we take a closer look in our area, we have this cold front that came in a few days ago, bringing in those cooler temperatures. But it looks like they're about to move on into the Pacific. Looking at our precipitation forecast, over the next 48 hours in our area, it doesn't look like we will be seeing any rain. But as we see certain parts of the United States, we'll be experiencing about half an inch of rain to an inch of rain or so. As we head into tomorrow, coming into Friday, it doesn't look like we'll be seeing any rain in our area, neither on Saturday. But we do see that we do have a few rain conditions here coming in through the United States. As we close out our weekend, on Sunday and head into Monday. It still doesn't look like we'll be experiencing any rain for the most part of our state, but we do have a little bit of rain coming in through the west. For tonight's forecast, we have clear skies, light winds coming in from the east southeast at about six miles per hour with a low of 42 degrees. So tonight will be a cool night, much like last night. You might want to grab that light jacket with you just to stay warm. For tomorrow's forecast, we have sunny skies. It'll be a very beautiful day tomorrow. Light breezes coming in from the east northeast at about five miles per hour with a high of 78. So tomorrow will be much like today, very beautiful outside, except it'll be a lot warmer up to about the 78 or whatnot. Class look outlook for tomorrow. At about 7 a.m. it should be about 48 degrees. At about 10 o'clock it should get to 65. Around 1 p.m. it should get to about 73. And at about 3 p.m. it should get to about 76. So you can definitely go jogging if you like. Looking at our four-day forecast for tomorrow, that high gets to 78 with a low of 52. Saturday that high gets to 82 with a low of 59. Sunday that high gets to stays around the 82 degrees and the low gets to 60 and Monday that high gets to 83. So Judson, over the last couple of days it has been very cool outside but it looks like those warm temperatures are headed back into our area for tomorrow and most of the weekend. Okay that sounds great especially for the weekend. Definitely. Thanks a lot Bree. You're welcome. Thanks.